Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. This is Scary Stories, Listener Scary Stories Part 2. This is where I read your personal scary stories. Subscribers, send me personal scary stories to my email and I read and live react to them in a video. I don't read them completely before making the video. I just pull ones that I kind of glance over them and pull them based on if I think they'll be good or not. And that way I can live react to them. If you want to submit your own scary story, it a lot of them are paranormal, but it doesn't have to be paranormal. It doesn't have to be your personal paranormal experience, though it can be. Love those two. But it can also just be something really scary that happened to you sometime in your life as well. It can be anything. It could be a lighthearted scary story or it can be some, you know, near death experience, what have you. I'm also collecting Halloween themed ones right now. I would love your Halloween themed stories. If the story took place on Halloween or just anything that involves like Halloween or spooky season, that would also be great because I want to make some in advance for Halloween week this year. The goal being having a couple extra videos come out that week. And I feel like these types of videos are possible for me to make in that amount of time. So if you would like to submit your own scary story, all you have to do is send it to the email that is down below in the description, the video recommendations email. I will put directions in there. All you have to do is make sure that you say scary story somewhere in the title so that it goes to the correct folder and it will be read. I was thrilled to hear all the great feedback from the first video that I made of this. You guys seem to really enjoy this. And like I said, I don't want this to replace any of my normal videos because it is different, but it is a way for me to put out extra content because I don't have to write these videos and they're a little easier to edit. So I will try to make these extra consistent videos. And it's also just a fun thing to do as a community. And a lot of people said that they like to listen to this like a podcast. Um, and you could definitely do that. There won't be that many visuals. So you're welcome to just listen to this like a podcast grab some tea, get cozy, because uh, here we go. Okay, story number one for today. And also I am reading off the screen, so don't mind me. First of all, I friggin' love your channel. Thank you so much. I have a story. It's paranormal, but I feel like it's one of those that's hard for a skeptic to challenge. I know you are a skeptic of paranormal stuff, so I'm curious what your thoughts are. Anyway, here we go. For context, me and my mom are fairly close and have a decent relationship. We've always enjoyed watching ghost adventures and stuff like that together, and we both had a passion for the idea of visiting a haunted place. I guess we're both just adventurous types. We're also both the only people in our family who absolutely love roller coasters, but I digress. I love that. I can't, I'm scared of like scary ro roller coasters. No thanks. Also, I love that you and your mom have that. My mom, I watch horror movies with my mom. My mom will watch absolutely any movie in the world. She just loves movies of all kind. So she'll watch horror movies with me and we definitely have a lot of fun doing that. I don't know if she'd go to a haunted place with me though. I don't know. It was my 13th birthday, October 20th, over a decade ago. And for my birthday this year, my mom bought us a tour of the St. Augustine Lighthouse, a well-known haunted location tour slash spot also featured on Ghost Adventures. I was so excited. I wasn't expecting anything in particular. I just really loved creepy stuff and just the idea of it was cool enough. I'm with you there too. I would totally go to haunted places just for the vibes, even if I didn't experience anything. A single tour guide led us and a small group, maybe about 10 other people from the living area to the heart of the lighthouse itself and into the different rooms that were said to be occupied by different spirits. There was a man who apparently had a thing for blondes, a little boy who would move a doll around, and a lady, I forgot what her story was, but I definitely remember them talking about a lighthouse keeper's wife or something like that. We climb up these winding spiral stairs, and it's a really marvelous sight. Ghosts or no ghosts, it's just cool to see the architecture and what it looked like at the very top to see the giant glass mirror-like bulb. It was just really cool. Anyway, the tour was winding down and our tour guide who had been making up the front of the group now secured the rear as everyone made their way back down the long spiral stairs. As my mother and tour guide continued having a conversation at the top, I was about halfway or a little over a quarter of the way down. The windows lining the staircase were thickly cut into the stone with a large amount of space to just sit on the window and look out. I was doing that with my flip-flop sitting on the steps behind me. 
The view was undeniably beautiful and I was pretty tired, but I felt content. I was just kind of waiting for my mom. I heard my mom holler at me from the top of the stairs that we're about to go and I say, okay. And I assume it's gonna take a minute for her and the guide to make their way down. But like one minute later, I hear fairly close by, put your shoes on, sweetie. It was the voice of an older lady and definitely not my mom, but really sweet sounding. I assumed it was the tour guide. So I kind of rolled my eyes and started to get down off the windowsill because I thought I was just being rushed. A few seconds later, my mom and the tour guide around the corner and their jaws are just gaping and their eyes are wide and they're staring. Did you hear that too? They asked. I looked at them really confused and was like, what? You told me to put my shoes on? They both just shook their heads and still had that look on their face of just pure shock. We didn't say that. So in conclusion, I'd just like to say the rest of the group had been out of the stairwell for at least five minutes, possibly more. And I've asked my mom about it a million times because I could hardly believe it. I thought they were messing with me because I heard the voice so clearly. There was literally no questions about what it said or if it happened. It was like a normal person talking 10 feet away. But my mom still swears to this day it was not a joke and she was with the tour guide the whole time and it wasn't her either. Anyways, that's my story of a sweet maternal ghost who told me to put my shoes on at the Haunted Lighthouse. Again, I really love your channel. I wrote this kind of quick, but I hope it's good enough to be featured. Thank you for reading Anonymous. Thank you so much. That's such a cute story. I don't have like an alternate explanation for that. I mean, I don't know what else that could be unless there was somebody else around that you're not saying in the story, but it doesn't sound like it. Whether there's an explanation or or not, but like hypothetically, if ghosts do exist I love a wholesome ghost story right like not all if spirits are real like it's not they can't all be evil or give us bad feelings right like some of them have to be good and kind and want to help us so I do love stories where they're sweet and where the ghosts are like helpful or maternal like Ah, I love that. All right, moving on to the second story today. This one's actually not paranormal, which I'm excited about. I haven't read this one yet. Recording this message after I read the story, a big trigger warning for this story for mention of S word, as well as mention of school uh, tragedies. Before I begin, I want to warn you, this story contains nothing paranormal, but just some of the worst behavior I've ever seen from fellow human beings. I request that you call me V in this story just so I can recognize who I am. Thanks, V. I was around 14 or 15 years old when I began to attend high school. I'm 18 now, but I've struggled to finish it, partially due to the events I'll talk about. I guess I also kind of want to vent, but you'll see. My classmates love to make everyone else's life a nightmare, including a classmate I'll call N. She was your stereotypical popular mean girl on steroids. She'd be nice to you, but would often convince people to skip class only for her to return and paint the picture that she was was peer pressured by her victims like she was a saint. I'd like to say something positive about her, but I really can't think of anything. And I think it might be for the best as I don't want to waste my oxygen thinking about that person. That's great advice. You're wise beyond your years. Don't let toxic people steal your energy because your energy is precious. Often she would try to convince me and my group because I often had the bad luck to deal with people like her. Maybe I looked like an easy victim for such things. However, it was actually tolerable compared to the stuff that other people I thought were my friends began to do after the first few months. During September or so, my school began to receive threats of a potential sh** coming through social media. I don't have Facebook as I find it obnoxious, but the news spread and I soon came to hear about it. I told my mom about them so that I could stay home during the week, but the school had said that the supposed shooter had been detained before they could do anything. Even so, I was still insecure. I live in Mexico, and as you might know, crime is insane in third world countries. I worried that maybe there could be someone out there who could intend to do what the other person didn't, and my first mistake was telling my friends about it. Just pausing to say I feel you so hard. That stuff scares the crap out of me. Like, I know it happens in other countries, but living in the U.S. where it feels like a daily mass, you know what, are a daily occurrence here for the most part. 
the school ones are also very common and it's just like it scared me so much as a kid and it still scares me today like it makes me scared to have kids like I feel you like absolute worst scenario worse than anything anyone paranormal could possibly do soon enough jokes about me being the shooter spread and even though I tried to put my foot down and tell my classmates to stop that they just didn't It was getting irritating, but if I acted on my anger, that would only make it look like they had the right to say those things, wouldn't it? There were like two other people who didn't do that, so I began sticking with them for the rest of the semester. Things were well, but then the next semester started, and I soon found out that one of my friends was being harassed by none other than one of our teachers. We tried to report them through any means necessary, and yet nothing ever got the school to do anything. Worst part was that during those months, the school was known as a breeding ground for pee and otherwise garbage wastes of oxygen. As the semester was closing to an end, I was just losing hope. My life at home wasn't great either. And the only escapism I had was turning into a living nightmare. I tried to end it once and for all before some classmates stopped me. Normally I'd be thankful for that, but one of them was one of those people calling me a shooter for their own personal entertainment. I just can't help but look back at it and it feels like those people wanted me to live as some sort of punching bag and that might have been the case. I slowly began losing contact with people and I guess that's how this thing ends. That's absolutely terrible. I am so sorry that all that happened to you. What the actual hell is wrong with people? I don't know if it's just your school. I mean kids were really mean back in the day too but I can't imagine somebody calling me like one of the worst types of crimes that you can do and like pretending even though they know you would never do that pretending like you would is absolutely vile of them gross that's gross even for teenagers i really hope you're doing okay today please please use resources if you need them because i am like slightly concerned about the way your story ended because it sounds like things are still um not great that you began to lose contact so i'm guessing that that means that this was a while ago and you're okay now but Um, I just really want to encourage you that I like, we're like everybody in my community, I promise you, we're glad that you're here. We're glad you're still here and uh, really hope that you have some sort of support somewhere or glom on to those friends that were good and did not torture you like that because those are the ones that will keep, hopefully help you keep your peace. I'm so sorry. Okay. The next story starts. I've always wanted to get the story out to someone other than those who know about it, and I absolutely adore your channel, so I figured, why not give it a shot? Thank you so much. I'm honored that I am the channel you picked to submit this to. All right. A few years ago, in the height of the pandemic, my now fiance, then boyfriend, and I took a trip down to my grandparents' house about three hours away, as their pharmacy was the only one at the time offering the vaccine, and I'm quite sickly, so I needed it. You can omit this information if you see fit. No, I'm not going to since you didn't request that it was removed. I think that's a really important thing to say. I would have driven three hours for sure to get the vaccine. I remember how much we all wanted the vaccine when it came out, or at least I did, especially as somebody who's immune compromised. I was like, poke me ASAP. Anyway, the way to and from my grandparents is one I know like the back of my hand. I can tell which house is coming up next, who has cows, and what gas station is in every town on the way. Our way back home was on a clear night with the sun just having set, and we were about a half an hour into the trip when we were leaving one of my favorite towns on the trip. It was a nice winding route through it with a nice quaint downtown and lots of pretty houses on the way. I was wondering if there would be any cows still out on the next farm, which is still a good mile or two ahead when my fiance and I saw it. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. There was a man standing at the edge of the cornfield facing away from us holding a briefcase. The man was all gray with a suit and bowler hat and just stood there still looking out into the barren field. My headlights illuminated him perfectly. I swerved out of shock and the man still hadn't moved. My fiance had caught a glimpse of him as well, but not as good as I had. 
Immediately following this, we entered an intensely thick patch of fog, which seemed to only envelop the section of road ahead of us. It was gray like smoke, but did not have an odor, nor was there a fire anywhere around us. It lasted only a few seconds, but it was terrifying considering the course of events leading up to this. The worst part... The farm ahead had no cows outside. <laughs> he went through all that scare and you didn't even get to see any cows. I'm so... <laughs> that sucks. So annoying. Fast forward maybe a month or two later and my little brother, who had just gotten his driver's permit, wanted to get dinner in the nearest larger town. This again is a route I have driven many times during my over 20 years of life and know even better than the route down to my grandparents' house. It was around the same time of night as before and we were headed back with our Taco Bell. Love Taco Bell. When my brother suddenly swerved and yelped, my mom and I, knowing my brother likes to joke around, especially when driving, sadly, gave him a piece of our minds until we realized he actually seemed shaken up. This is when he told us what he saw. A gray man very close to the side of the road in a house's driveway facing away from us, briefcase in hand, and a bowler hat on his head. This gave me some of the worst chills of my life. I had never told him or anyone else about what my fiance and I had seen as we were worried people might shrug us off, but this was crazy. I explained everything to them from the back seat, my mom thinking nothing of it, but my brother silent and still as he drove ahead. He didn't wanna talk about it anymore. I wish this didn't sound so cliche, but this was probably the most unexplainable thing that has ever happened to me and something with multiple witnesses. I have never seen the gray men or man or whatever they are ever again, and I'm not sure what I would do if I will. You can use my first name, Amali, in this video. Thank you so much, Amali. That is a trippy ass story. I don't like that at all. The fact that I think it's really interesting that your mom shrugged it off when she was the only one who didn't see it. I thought that was really interesting that she like did not take it seriously whatsoever. Just thought that it was random dudes hitchhiking or something like that. I find that very fascinating. But for those of you that actually saw it, were legitimately shaken up and like your brother. Wow, that's such a good story. I don't like that. <laughs> The thought of a man with a briefcase not looking at the road and also not moving out of the road when a car's coming towards them and has to swerve. I don't like that. I will be thinking about that one for days to come. Thanks, Molly. Okay, let's keep going. Story four. Hi, Hannah. I have a few scary stories slash scary experiences I'd like to share for your side series. I'd like to stay anonymous if possible. The first story occurred when I was around two years old. I was too young to remember this happening, but the story still gives me chills whenever my mom talks about it. At this age, I would frequently sleep in my parents' room due to recurring nightmares been there. My parents were renting an old Rambler in Redmond, Washington. I've also been there. I used to live there. Aww. One night, my mom woke up to the sound of my voice. At first, she couldn't tell where I was, as this was very late at night and it was extremely dark in her room. Once her eyes adjusted well enough to see, she saw that I was sitting in her closet across from her bed. She could see that I was facing the back wall of the closet, seemingly talking and giggling with someone. My mom asked what I was doing. I slowly turned my head toward her and said very matter-of-factly, I'm playing with the children. My mom didn't know how to respond. <laughs> Who would? She simply asked me to get back in bed and go to sleep. The following day, when asked about this strange behavior, I seemed to have no idea what my mom was talking about. There were, fair, there were apparently a few other instances of odd things happening around the house, battery-operated toys making sound with no batteries in them, my parents describing heavy feelings in certain rooms, etc. However, we moved to a new house before I could play with the children again. One of my worst fears is, as a lot of you know, I definitely, I do really, really, really want children someday, but it is like one of my worst fears that one of my kids will just like, they're really young. They don't even know what a ghost is. And they just come up to me and tell me that they saw someone or something and they explain it in great detail and I can't see it because if they don't even know what ghosts are yet, and also children just tend not to lie unless it benefits them. So that scares me to death. However, I do wonder if maybe, is it possible that you were sleepwalking 
because I used to sleepwalk as a child. I don't anymore, but a couple times I would sleepwalk as a child and I didn't do much. I just like got out of bed and went to my mom's and I usually had to pee. So she'd have to like lead me to the bathroom and I would go to the bathroom and then I would she would lead me back to bed and I'd get back in bed. So I have no doubt that this really happened, but I do kind of wonder if maybe you were sleepwalking or it was something like sleepwalking. That would also explain why you don't remember it because people don't typically remember any of their sleepwalking either. So really interesting though. Okay, same person, your second story isn't something that directly happened to me, but happened to my mom. When I was around nine years old, my family and I went on a trip to Victoria, BC. My parents decided to take me to tour a historic house during our trip. The house we visited is known as the Helpkin House. Built in 1852, this was the home of Dr. John Sebastian Helcom, Helm, Helm, Helmchen and his daughter Dolly. At the time of our visit in this historic home, visitors would be given headphones and a CD player, which would provide some history of the home as it guided visitors through each room. Each CD was different and would start visitors in a different part of the home as to avoid crowding makes sense. The day we visited wasn't particularly busy, so we were often the only ones present in each room. As I walked through each room, learning about the history of the residents and the Helmkin, Helpchen, I can't say it, family, I remember getting a strange feeling in what was said to have been Dolly's room. As the guided tour expressed, Dolly would often play hide and seek with her father and other members of the family. I distinctly remember being drawn to the door of the room I was in. It was wide open, so I couldn't see behind it. But I had this odd feeling that Dolly would pop out from behind the door at any moment. The tour continued, and at one point, it guided me to the second level of the home. This is where I found my mom, who had apparently been looking for me. She told me to take my headphones off. I did, and she asked if I had been trying to get her attention earlier. Confused, I said something like, no, I've been downstairs basically this entire time. She then explained that in the previous second floor room she was in, she had felt a strong tug on her pant leg. She turned around to see that there was nobody in the room with her. She said she looked for me, thinking that I might have been playing a trick on her, but didn't see me anywhere. To this day, I still wonder if Dolly had been trying to get my mom's attention. Perhaps she wanted to play a game of hide and seek. Here's an article I found briefly discussing the Helmchen house and its possible haunting. I'll leave this link in the description for everybody if you want to read it yourself. I appreciate you reading my stories and I would love to see one of them, if not both, featured in a video. I've been a longtime fan of your content and can't wait to hear some of the stories you receive. Best wishes, Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. I love the story of your mom in the house, especially because it wasn't that crowded and there wasn't like other kids around that could have explained her getting the tug on her leg or whatever, and that you were nowhere. And also why you seem too old to like tug on your mom's pant leg anyway. So it obviously wasn't you. So weird. All right, our next story. This is story five. We're doing six stories today. Hi, Hannah. This happened to me in 2018 and still gives me chills. I'd like to remain anonymous. For reference, I'm rather obviously gay male in my 20s, slim build with long hair. This happened to me in the summer of 2018. I sat down on a public bench to wait for a bus. There was a very elderly gentleman, 80 years or older, carrying a cane, very frail in appearance, already seated on the other end end of the bench. I had a brochure for cable TV services in my hand and I was looking at options when this old man struck up a conversation with me. He asked me what I was reading and I showed him what it was. He then asked what shows I like to watch and I listed a few things. I didn't find anything unusual about him trying to talk to me. It was a very lone your senior citizen just wants some human interaction feeling at first. I love that. I love... I love sweet old people and talking to them. He then asks me, do you like them crime scene shows? I told him I did because I do. He said, I love them. I love seeing the bodies. <laughs> what? <laughs> if an old man to what? That is not something that you tell a stranger, sir. <laughs> wow. Okay. I kind of shook my head and laughed because I have a morbid sense of humor and also because it was awkward. <laughs> 
Then I turned back to look at this old man and he suddenly was just staring at me with the most intense gaze leaning forward. His eyes were piercing. It was like a mask had fallen off. I hear that so much in I Survived stories that people say that their attacker, like their eyes, like evil people do have a vibe, especially to their eyes. Like their eyes will just go black. Like like I can't describe it because I've never seen it myself, but I totally believe you because I have heard so many survivors say that their assailant has that weird look. Like suddenly they go from one thing to a different thing immediately. He said, if I was 20 years younger, I'd grab you by that hair of yours and take you back to my basement like I did with all those other boys like you. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I froze up. He proceeded to reminisce to me a fairly in fairly vivid detail about his life as a transient construction worker who had moved from state to state in the Midwest. He claimed to have hooked up with and then killed young gay men in multiple different states and that in an old home of his, he had sealed bodies in concrete underneath a basement floor. He then remarked on how no one ever caught him, laughed, and then said, too old for that now. I just got up and left the bench. He didn't try to follow. I didn't know what else to do. I felt like I was on autopilot. Ended up just going into a nearby business and later taking a different bus. He didn't try to follow me or anything. And to this day, it haunts me. And I'm honestly still kicking myself for not asking him more information about his victims. I feel like I lost an opportunity to potentially provide closure, closure or solve a crime. I've told this story to a few people and some have expressed that maybe the man was senile and delusional, but I do not think so. If you had been there and seen his eyes, you would know he was serious and not senile at all. It still gives me chills to think about how he looked at me. I'm glad he wasn't his younger self. Anonymous. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't, what the fuck? Okay. So here's my thoughts on this. I would have also suggested maybe the senile or delusional thing. But as you said, he went into pretty great detail and it wasn't like he was saying random stuff like people with dementia typically like will say stuff that's incoherent or does not make sense with the present situation. And from everything you described, he was coherent and making sense the whole time. I So I believe you. I don't think that was the case. The other explanation I would give is like maybe it was an old man that was messing with you. Like maybe he was just playing a trick on you or thought it was funny to scare the crap out of you or something like that. Like, I would offer that explanation, but I honestly, I believe you in this case that that also was not the case, because I think if that was the case, I don't think you would have seen such a shift in his face, like the mask fell off so early on in the story. Like, I totally, 1000%, I may be skeptical about ghosts, but I 1000% believe in people's vibes and people's just, um, other people's energies. Like, it's that, like, sense where you can tell that somebody's gonna be a really close friend, like, within five minutes of meeting them, whereas other people, like, most people are just fine, but then there's some of those people that you know you're gonna like and get along with and click with, and then there's that other group of people that you know instantly you're not going to like, right? I think humans have like a sixth sense that just kind of comes as a natural instinct to them. There might be a scientific explanation for that. I don't know. But um, I honestly believe in that. And I, seeing somebody's mask fall, even for just a brief second, I think is so real. And I think as we, as you learn, as you get older, if people tell you they are some way, you should probably believe them. And um, this is terrifying. I feel I am so sorry that you have no information. I mean, like, because, like, what are you going to do? Call the police and say, like, this old man told me this scary thing, but I don't know his name. I don't know the name of any of his victims or anything like that. I would love to know the area that you're in. I won't say it on the channel, but can I ask if you're listening to this, would you email me like more details? Because have you ever looked? I would be really curious to know, like, have you ever looked at 
murders from around the decades that this would have happened? Have you ever looked in your area to see if a lot of boys had gone missing and somebody hadn't been caught? I don't know. I personally, I know it's weird as hell, but I personally think it would be worth reporting. You don't have to call anybody or anything. And I mean, obviously you don't have to do anything I tell you to do. But honestly, I do think personally it would be worth writing down all the details you know and just sending it to a tip line, like sending it anonymously to a police station or just sending it into a non-emergency email or number or something like that, because you just never know. Like maybe they've been looking for somebody and they have a case that that sounds like. And if you told them what bus stop you were at, they might be able to trace him or get an idea of the area that he currently lives in now because that's just so weird but on the other hand it is odd that he would admit that to a stranger knowing that he could get caught like that part is also very strange like wouldn't that be super risky i this reminds me so much you know of the green green river not green river golden state killer who got the dna match and got caught many many years later like recently you know it reminds me so much of that and i just don't think he would I mean, he never told a soul that it was him, even as an old man. So I don't know. I don't know. I would love it if you felt comfortable and wanted to. I would love to chat with you more about that story because that's so bizarre. If you feel comfortable emailing me a follow up, I would love to chat with you more about it. But yeah. All right. Let's do the last story for today. This is our sixth story. Hey, Hannah, my name is Allie. They, them pronouns. And before I get into it, I wanted to let you know that your channel is amazing. I relate to you a lot as I'm also a Western Washington native. Oh, yay. The first time I heard you mention it, I got really stupid levels of happy. I'm like that too. Don't worry. I follow so many YouTubers and celebrities I like when I find out that they're like in Washington or like they relate to me somehow not saying I'm a celebrity by any stretch of the imagination but I get like that too I get all like ah we're like been in we've been in the same places and stuff so I totally get it. that's awesome love Washington State anyway sorry okay I'm going to leave a few of my most insane stories feel free to read all or any or all of them. My first story to break things up isn't paranormal, just your average true crime worries. Back in the summer of 2019, I was living with my partner and their family just off Casino Road in Everett, Washington. Now, this place has always had a really nasty reputation, but things have gotten dicey in recent years due to a massive increase in the homeless population. Seattle started shunting their unhoused citizens to Everett because at least we have outreach programs to help them get back on their feet. I know my mom has been working in that kind of population, like the unhoused, as well as just like low income people. And I know it's absolutely bananas here, how bad it gets in certain areas. Usually I would only be worried when walking around at night or in the early morning, not in the middle of a sunny summer day. I was walking to the corner store to get fountain drinks for me and my partner to fight the heat. And I had my earbuds in listening to music. I like listening to music when I'm walking because it distracts my anxiety from the fact that people perceive me. Nothing seems amiss aside from a clearly very unstable guy ahead of me who was artfully swinging around a rusty lawnmower blade as if it were a show sword. I slowed my pace until he crossed to the other side of the road, then feeling safe to pass him. On my return trip, I was met by a police officer and a very worried neighbor flagging me down. She asked me if I was okay and I explained that she had yelled to scare off lawnmower blade dude because he had crossed back behind me and was stalking me with the blade. In broad daylight, in the middle of a residential neighborhood. The nerve. I then helped the officer and woman do a quick sweep of the street, finding what we thought was the blade in question and it being confiscated by the officer. It would become very clear to me later that it was just another random blade. I go home. I'm hanging out in the living room with my partner's dad and brother, and there's a knock at the door. I'm closest to the door, so I get up and open it. We hardly got visitors, so we thought it was the landlord or neighbor from one of the other units in our crappy townhouse. It was lawnmower blade guy. In the most intimidating tone I've ever heard, he asked if Jessica was there. I opened the door a little wider to show him 
that there were two big angry dudes behind me and just said, nobody by that name lives here, bud. He said, okay, and flashed the lawnmower blade, which he had hidden in his sleeve at me as he turned and walked away. I closed and bolted that door so fast, you have no idea. I had my partner's dad drive me to work for a couple days. That guy was never seen again. I hope it stays that way, lawnmower blade dude. That's terrifying. I thought that story was going to end after just following you and then not following you, but somebody saw the lawnmower guy follow you and then leave you alone. Even that alone would scare the crap out of me because there's something about someone following you even for a few seconds feels incredibly invasive and unnerving. So that alone, the fact that he somehow found where you lived or where what house townhouse you were at afterwards and went to go like pretty much threaten and intimidate. I hope lawnmower blade dude is in jail somewhere. My next story is my most compelling paranormal story I've experienced and I still can't find a rational explanation. I want to preface this with the fact that I am indigenous Alaskan. And if this story serves as any proof, I have a very strong, albeit uncontrollable connection to the other side. I've also attached a quick map of my childhood bedroom for reference. I'll put that on the screen as I read this. I was probably around 12 to 13 and my friend was 14 to 15. I was in my room with my childhood best friend who was staying over on a warm summer night. We were laying on my bed, window open, reading our respective books in silence, just enjoying the company. You know, as you do. I was given the master bedroom in this house as I had by far the most stuff. I'm the baby cousin and was spoiled by grandma. It included not only a walk-in closet with access to the main bedroom, but a smaller coat closet in the corner by the window. As we were sitting in silence, we both hear the distinct click of a doorknob turning fully and instinctively look up at the door to the hallway, expecting one of my parents or my brother coming in to check on us and say goodnight, but the door isn't open. We hear a creaking off to our left and look in time to see the door to my small closet slowly opening on its own. We don't spare any shame. We both bolted out of that room as fast as we could. We were scrambling like little terrified rodents. After spending about five minutes recovering downstairs in the living dining area, we crept back to the room to investigate and make sure we weren't hallucinating. We weren't. The door was still wide open. We then spent the next 15 to 30 minutes attempting to recreate the event. We thought maybe it was the wind causing air pressure shenanigans or maybe my brother thumping around in the next room caused enough vibration to knock it open. None of our tests worked and it wasn't until I was pulling it open again when I heard the same click and realized that sound only happened when the knob was turned all the way. The door had been fully and securely shut. Something turned the knob. It wasn't until a year or two later when one of my other besties was going through the small closet with me that we found something strange. For reference, that closet mainly held special clothes like my Christmas dress from when I was five. I didn't go into there for much of anything. At the bottom of the bottommost box in the closet, we found something wrapped in a black plastic bag. Inside was a handmade cloth doll that honestly looked cursed. I took it to my mom to ask where it came from because I had never seen it before in my life and I swear that woman kept a catalog of my toys. Her face went sheet white. That's when she told me. My godmother, my mother's best friend even today, loved to travel. She would often bring me back gifts from her travels like the Princess Castle lamp she bought at Disneyland or the sombrero and handmade musical instruments she got me on her trip to Mexico. This doll was a gift she got me from a street vendor in Egypt, just outside the town she was visiting before riding on camel to her next destination. My mom, upon being shown the doll and given it to pass to me, immediately got really, really weird vibes. The energy she felt coming off this thing was powerful and dark. So she went into one of my boxes in the garage and shoved that thing to the very bottom before burying the box under and behind the other boxes. How the box ended up in my closet is still a mystery. I no longer have dolls as I left it behind when I moved out at 19 and I hope to never see it again. The indigenous side of my family has had plenty more experiences like this. Dad's side sliding window slamming closed in his face shortly after his father's passing 
they had a thing, my dad and brother witnessing the 15 foot long shelf in the garage flying off the wall and into the middle of the room. Really weird and sometimes prophetic dreams, which leads me into my third and final story that took place a few years before I was born. My two older brothers had just gotten new bikes. That night, my indigenous grandmother, who lived a two to three hour drive away, had a horrible and vivid dream. In her dream, she watched in a cinematic fashion as my brothers went to ride their bikes together for the first time. As they crossed the road, a blue SUV slash minivan type vehicle came speeding in and slammed head on into my middle brother, killing him on impact. Grandma woke up in a panic in the dead of night and flew to the phone to tell her son not to let the boys out on their bikes until they had helmets. Mom and dad made the drive out to her the next day as she bought them high quality helmets as a gift to go with their bikes. Once fitted with their high end, really sturdy helmets, the boys took to the road with my parents watching from the front door. In what they consider to be one of their most terrifying parenthood experiences, my middle brother got hit, just like in my grandma's dream. It was the exact same vehicle right down to the license plate. My brother had gotten hit so hard that the grill left a perfect impression on his helmet. Had he not been wearing it, he would not be here right now. Grandma listening to the signals her ancestors were sending saved my brother's life. It's also important to note that at this point, grandma had several brain aneurysms and surgeries to fix them in the past and would go on to have a couple more. By the time of her last brain surgery, she was living on a third of her original brain mass, completely functional and coherent. That's amazing. This woman had otherworldly connections beyond anything I've seen before, and I think it may run in the family. She passed away a year ago in July of 22, and I wanted to put this story out there as it's honestly the first one that comes to mind when I think about her and fully showcases the kind of mother and grandmother she was. I love you, Grandma Flora. You are very much missed. Stop it. You're going to make me cry. That's all I have for now. I love your content and look forward to watching more. Allie. Thank you, Allie. Oh my gosh. That story had everything. Ghosts, scary things happening, dolls, creepy encounters, grandmas. I love it. That's so wild that your grandma could see something like that. Like when it was really important, like the vision came to her and the fact that you feel like you feel stuff too. That's so crazy. That's so cool. As for the doll story, good job on your mom for burying it away in a box just after she got the creepy vibes from it and like was like, yeah, this thing's not going in my house. I wonder how it ended up in your closet. And I also really want to know what it is to this day. Day. If you ever find it, please send me a picture of it because I would love that. I would love a picture of that doll and why it was so creepy. I just want to see a doll from a street vendor in Egypt. Bananas, but smart on her for putting it away. I have a special thing about dolls because as a kid, they used to absolutely terrify me beyond like I absolutely so much. It took me many, many, it took me till my mid twenties to be able to be okay and more fascinated by haunted dolls and stuff. I couldn't watch The Conjuring till I was in my late twenties because of Annabelle. So, you know, I have a thing about dolls and yeah, that's so crazy. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Allie. All right, everybody. That's going to be it for Scary Stories Part Two, I hope you enjoyed this as much as part one. Leave me feedback if you have anything that you'd like tweaked about these videos. If I get multiple feedbacks about the same kind of thing, then I definitely consider it. If you'd like your story considered, please don't hesitate to email it. Hannah underscore the horrible at yahoo.com. It'll be in the description. Leave scary story somewhere in the title. It doesn't have to be the whole title, but just make sure it's somewhere in the subject line. And that's going to be it for today. Please like the video and I'll see you guys on the next one. 
Okay, bye. Thank you so much to all of our patrons on the screen right now. Special shout out to top tiers are Colin Holmes, The Dick of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Brittany Phillips, Momo Neon, Marina144, Sage K, Elderly Hipster, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Toby, Carter, Kawakan Anime and Gaming Convention, Sarah the Crazy Fish Lady, Blood for the Koi, Maxi, Ellison Luna, Julietta, Tiny Mighty Bookworm, A Bunny Apparently, Leon Vanek, Literally Lacey, Elliot Fink, I Am In Your Walls, Habromania, Cyberdog Investigations LLC, Vicky Cat, Amy B, Tickerch, Dead Without the E, Ball, Olivezilla, Chara, MH Dave, Ami, Lindsay R, Miss T, Ordinary Alpaca, Lou Raccoon, Shauna Smith, El Magnificoco, and our newest top tiers, Victor Schmiel, Laura Winter, Lilith, and Dana. 